All right, I'm gonna call the License Hearing and Public Safety Committee meeting for January 25th, 2023 to order. Um, roll call, Alderman Decker. Here. Alderman Heideman. Here. Alderman Salazar. Here. And Alder Person Ackley is excused. Mm -hmm. Roll call, Alderperson Feldy, I am here. Ackley excused. Decker? Yep, yep, yep. Heideman? Yep. Salazar? Here. All right. Pledge of Allegiance, please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I think everybody knows everybody, so we're going to go right to the approval of minutes from January 11th. I make a motion to approve. Second. Is there any discussion? Any corrections? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Chair votes aye. Minutes are approved. Number six, RO number 93-22-23-116-23 by Chief Fire Chief pursuant to section 5564 of the Municipal Code submitting the quarterly report of benchmark measurements for the fire department for the period commencing October 1, 2022 and ending December 31, 2022. Well, thank you, Chair. So um, everybody should have gotten the report. Uh, just like many, many fire departments across this country, uh, if, uh, about 500, uh, 521 calls over uh, last year. So um, something that's unique to the fourth quarter that we are overlapping incidents, which is when one incident's going, uh, you know, you might have one or two or three or four more calls at the same time. So overlapping, uh, we are at 62% in the fourth quarter, which is quite high. So over half of our calls were multiple calls. Uh, we could continue to do our inspection program and refine it. So uh, we accomplished and or completed a hundred more inspections in this year's fourth quarter than last year um, or in 21 than 22 sorry and then uh even though our call volume was higher overall it, our fourth quarter was just a little bit slower or lower than the previous year which is kind of unique so um we continue to do our station tours we're doing all our pub ed events um we doubled them obviously because covid restrictions were lifted and uh, we're continuing to uh, put more emphasis in our training hours. So you'll see that we increased our training hours a little uh, close to 1300 uh, compared to the previous week. So any, any questions that I can answer? Perfect. Well, the question, sorry, one question. <laughs> For the overlapping call percentage, that's mm -hmm. just like, that's not because you don't have enough people answering phones. That's just because more calls were coming in. Right? Correct. Right. Correct. It's it's just part of the yeah. fact of life. Okay. Uh, even if we had staffing, it, it would still count as an overlapping. Okay. You know. yeah. right. Any other questions? Yeah, Chairman. Um, yeah, I had that circled myself. Okay, because but you gave me a good explanation of it. The, what percentage of an overlap? Is there um, when you're giving mutual aid? Is that also in there? Yeah. Any incident. Regardless of what location, regardless. Do you have a percentile of what that would be of, of an overlapping call where you call out to help somebody, so another department? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't have the percentage of how, if we were on a mutual aid, if that was one of the overlapping, I don't have right. that. I okay. could get it. I just yeah. opened the report to do it. No. Um, our mutual aid uh, calls on there. So you'll see in the in the fourth quarter we ran 12 mutual or um, we received help 12 different times from an outside agency, right. and we responded 45 times. Out, am I on the right? Yeah, 
45 times, sorry, uh, to go help. Um, so part of it is helping Orange Cross. Some of it is helping our, you know, structure fires or, you know, sending a, for accidents, those kind of things. So it's, it's a mix, but 12 is there, of those. Is there, a, is there a specific department that we receive more mutual aid calls from the town or from the uh, Donald Wilson? Yeah, Wilson? no, there's not one that over. So we have that quad, remember that I, so that if we have a fire, they will help us, we right. will help them. Yeah. Um, so I think most of the majority, just guessing without looking at this, yeah, the majority is Orange Cross assists. Oh, this, okay. Yeah. Um, and again, they're helping us a, a lot too. It's just hit or miss. There's, you know, someone is having a heart attack and it's hard for us. Yeah. How do, how do you say no and right. mm -hmm. if we can help we can help you know what i mean because when we need the yeah. help they come so yeah. Don't, yeah don't say no yeah and so um well like with the overlap too you're talking about you, know, like you could have a call at the north side station and then a call at the south side station two, two different incidents that's still considered overlap. yeah it could be yeah. multiple calls so we we station have, one can you can have two calls at the same time one up on the fourth floor fourth floor here and one in the basement yeah and we have two different units coming that's an overlap if they had it in the same time we still have the personnel oh yeah yeah the overlapping incidents truly don't have anything to do with personnel now i will be honest with you and tell you yes yeah, someday we're gonna have to have that discussion because i am understaffed but that's down the road overlapping incidents would still happen whether i had 100 people on duty or 20 it's still yeah. gonna happen. It's just two happen. Two incidents happen at the same time. That's gonna happen. The odds are there. Are, are there. Yeah. yeah, with our increase in call volume, you're gonna see that more. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes exactly. it makes sense because the world is busy, you know. Yeah. There. Yep. The, we more population, more incidents. Uh, a lot of people are now out of the COVID thing, so they were doing a lot more of stuff. Um, and truly, there's it's just things are changing. So yeah. You said understaffed. Is there a reason for that you're understaffed? Is it because you don't have the full volume you should have of staff? Or? Yeah, we'll, we we will certainly talk about that uh, at a at a different in the future. Um, it, it is quite to sum it up. Yes, okay. we, we just don't have the personnel like we should. Okay. Uh, according and summer's to summer's coming and they want vacations. And vacations are huge in summer, right? I know that. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. We don't need to approve this one, do we? You can just accept the file. Okay. Motion. Somebody want to make a I'll motion? Make a accept. motion to accept the file. Second. Any more discussion? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Okay. Number seven, RO number 94-22-23-116-23 by Police Chief Christopher Domagowski pursuant to section 5465 of the Municipal Code submitting the quarterly report of benchmark measurement for the police department for the period commencing October 1, 2022 and ending December 31, 2022. Take it away, Chief. Okay, good afternoon. Um, just like Eric said, you have the report in front of you. Um, I'll just go over the highlights quickly for you. Part one crime was flat year to date in comparison to 2021 and a slight decrease in comparison to 2020. There was 852 part one crimes in 2022, 841 in 2021 and 973 in 2020. Traffic accidents year to date were 418 first, uh, sorry, 1,418 first 1,365 in 2021 and 1,340 in 2020. So just a very slight increase, but under um, our goal um, of 1,500. Um, along with that, um, traffic stops were, if you look at the sheet, increased um, by about 20%. Uh, traffic arrests increased um, by about 800. Um, so they're doing the deployments and making the stops. Um, so trying to imply, uh, do enforcement where necessary to continue to bring those accidents down. 
Um, and then lastly, involuntarily, involuntary commitments were relatively flat year to day in comparison to the same period in 2021. But there was an increase in comparison to 2020. So 138 this year versus 144 last year and 101 in 2020. Then I can answer any questions if you have any. Um, question on, on the um, traffic stops. Is there, does there seem to be an increase in the reckless driving similar to like what they're having down in Milwaukee and things like that? Is that kind of what you're running into? Is that why we're having more of these? So I wouldn't say reckless driving like in Milwaukee. I would say the same thing that I said in the, probably the last 20 meetings or so. Okay. There's, there's a lot more aggressive driving, people in a hurry, and distracted driving. So people on their phones trying to multitask and do multiple things and, and just aren't as courteous as they used to be in, in the past. So I think that that's primarily where the focus needs to be um, on, it, on both enforcement and messaging. That we just really, it's dangerous when people are driving in that fashion and people need to slow down. And, and it starts with personal responsibility, not just complaining about how somebody else is driving mm -hmm. and not paying attention to how you're driving because you're doing the same things. But I think really every time each individual gets in a car, they need to pay attention to how they are operating that vehicle. And some of that, you know, I think that we hear from citizens is is some of the courtesy things that we've talked about at, at past meetings. So somebody at a crosswalk that that's waiting across both them doing what they need to do. And by that, I mean, signaling to oncoming drivers that they want to cross and not yeah. standing there looking the other way. So the driver doesn't know if they should stop or not. Yeah. But then drivers paying attention and if somebody does want to cross stopping and allowing them to, to, to cross rather than ignoring them or trying to speed up so that that they can't stop. It's just really a combination of all of those things, I think. Yeah. Um, I've been known to drive more than one car at a time. And, and, and I do it quite well. You can ask my wife. So, How you do that? Here's, <laughs> here's the thing. Is there a specific area that within the community of Sheboygan that has a higher rate of traffic stops than, like, is the north side worse, worse than the south side? Well, don't do that. Why not? You're I will stay out of there. I'll stay out of there. <laughs> I'll bet my area is question, District please. 1. I, I live at, uh, on the corner of the, well, I don't know. Well, I would say there's certain North Avenue like, and like this Taylor Drive. Drive. Yeah. Really more traffic. That's fair, but the, separating the town in half by like South Street Drive. I just was trying to give my point of reference. Okay. Now, so, I th so I think there are particular areas that we have more accidents than others. And then we have areas where there's more traffic. So 14th and Erie is probably the busiest yeah. Yeah. intersection. Yeah. Far, but, but far. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I've said in past, what we do is we have a crime analyst and he maps all of our um, activity. So all the accidents get mapped and all of the crime gets mapped. And where those things overlap, we create hotspots and those are areas that we concentrate on doing enforcement in because they'll drive down both the accidents and drive down crime in those areas. We'll also look at, you know, what we talked about intersections where, where there's a higher number of accidents and then try to put together a plan. Part of it would be enforcement, but it could be working with DPW to change stop signs yeah. or do things like that um, to, to try to correct those behaviors there. Thank you. Can I ask a follow-up to that question? Sure. Do you partner with, does Public Works get this information where you're like, you've you've done your homework, you have somebody internally who does it. Does Public Works get to see it in the city, you know, who handles the street and lighting and stop signs to make adjustments? Do you guys collaborate? So that's, yeah. When Great. they put together a plan, it's talking to Ryan and all of Great. that. And no, okay. See, here's the issue. Here's what we think. Sure. What do you oh, think? Right. What's best practice by you that you know about? And here's... And so that's all of that goes together. Great. I just wanted to make sure there was still communication and just yep. making yep. change if we can. Right. And all of our mapping is done now on their platform, on the, oh, on the Ezra great. GIS platform. So they have access to all of that if they really want it. But it's the same thing with, with planning up, upstairs in, in all of our beat neighborhoods and that. We're going out with them, collecting data, and it's all getting put on those maps so we know what areas to concentrate on. Okay. Cool. Thank you. And for the record, he didn't say anything about Illinois drivers.
So <laughs> yeah, I wasn't asked about to be the president. I, I actually think oh, that the president meant in North and South drivers. He meant Illinois and Wisconsin. That's what he was doing. Yeah, <laughs> Ask Dave. Every time you see somebody with a Illinois license plate and they're passing him, he goes, Illinois. <laughs> Could be my wife. Just let me <laughs> say that. Could be your wife. <laughs> Are there any other questions for the chief? Okay. We need a motion to approve the report. Uh, to approve or to file? file. To accept and file. Yeah. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept and file. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Okay. Motion. Oh, I vote yes to or aye. Um, our next meeting will be February 15th. It's three weeks from now. I, there's a potential that we'll be having a hearing. I think it's more likely further, further on, but just so you're aware, coming up in the next month or month and a half or so, we'll probably have a fairly likely hearing. So okay. I won't be at that one then. The 15th? The, no, the 15th I'll be at. It's yeah. later in the month of February. we got to stay. So we'll just need to make sure that Betty comes. Actually, I think there's actually a lot of money because of the March first. I'm I'm actually out of the state from the 16th through March 6th. Okay. Oh, that's a long haul. Yeah, I work at a place that closes during the off season, so I'm gonna take your vacation. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Moving on, number nine, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor. All in favor. All in favor, vote aye. Aye. Okay. And we are adjourned.